Hey folks, it's Ray at DCRainmaker.com here, and today I'm going to show you what happens when you press that emergency response button on your Garmin watch. Now, right now, that's just the Garmin 400 945 LTE, but the reality is, of course, it won't be too long before it's many more watches than that. Now, when you do that, that's going to go ahead and set off a chain reaction of things that will ultimately put a helicopter at your feet to rescuers of some sort, no matter where you are in the world. It's something Garmin's had on their inReach devices for many, many years. These devices use satellite technology that will send those messages back and forth. So whether you're in the middle of the ocean, Ocean or in the middle of Alaska, it doesn't really matter. They'll be able to find you and get rescuers to you in that case. Whereas with the watch, it does depend on cellular connectivity. And I know some folks are probably thinking to yourself, you know, how much trouble can I get to in cellular range? And the reality is cellular range is really, really broad these days. And I think there are plenty of scenarios uh, where you can go out trail running, whatever the case may be, trip and fall down a ravine and be just maybe even a few hundred meters from a normal trail or from civilization, but you're doing that just before sunset and, and you get yourself into trouble really, really quick. The same is true of open water swimming. It is tremendously difficult to swim out of cellular range while open water swimming, but it is tremendously easy to get yourself into deep crap while open water swimming just with currents and tides and changes of weather to having a simple button to get emergency support even while swimming just a kilometer or two off of shore uh, is a huge deal. Okay, so let's get right into the test. A very quick warning though, please don't do this like for fun. Uh, I had this all coordinated ahead of time. We had a slew of people on a huge Skype call. Uh, so they knew that my call, my incoming request was not a real emergency, uh, but it was treated all the same. Well, I'll show you how that all happened. But a simple life lesson is don't piss off the people that you're gonna save your life someday. Don't like fake emergency call just to show how this works. So there are three ways this works. Uh, number one is to go ahead and go into the controls menu by holding the upper left hand button for a second. And then you see assistance plus right there. You tap that and you choose emergency response. Uh, at that point, it's gonna start a 10 second countdown. You'll have those 10 seconds to cancel that request in case you actually accidentally did this. Uh, at the end of those 10 seconds, it's going to start the call to the Garmin Emergency Response Center. That is officially called the IERCC, International Emergency Response Coordination Center. Uh, now, this is a center based in Texas, uh, but they've been handling calls like this for, I don't know, a decade or something like that. There are thousands of examples. You can go on Garmin's website and look at them of people that have crashed planes and gotten themselves in deep crap uh, and had themselves saved, their lives saved. Garmin said something like eight or 10,000 lives by now have been saved by this technology. So this is not new at all. What's new is going to your watch itself. So it took on average about 30 to 40 seconds from the moment I pressed that button for it to connect to cellular, make sure it was on cellular, go all the way to their center and back again before I got a message back on my watch. And again, we were on this Skype call so I could hear the, the uh, message come in, I could see them respond. It was kind of cool to watch it all happen in real time. Now, the first thing they're gonna ask you is how can they help you? Uh, and then from there, you have the option to use a bunch of pre-canned answers uh, to respond or you can use this little rotary keyboard if you've got something more specific that you need help with. Now, before you even start typing back though, they already have your exact location, they know where you are, and they've started coordinating to figure out who the right emergency response team is for your area. Uh, so in my case, I was in the Netherlands, I was out near the ocean, uh, and she looked at the map and she said, yep, you're on the edge of a tree line, it looks like some sand dunes or something like that, uh, and that's where we need to be in the Netherlands. And that's important to understand where you are because they have to coordinate with every country on earth. Uh, so they have to know who the right coordination person Point is in that country and then from there they figure out who the right person is to save you so if i'm you know on land that's a different person than if i'm out in the ocean that's like the coast guard versus the land is someone else and the response coordinator i talked to said they're doing that from the moment that message comes in so even before you start typing and tell them what's wrong they're starting to figure out how to triage your particular location okay and a quick note if you're finding this video interesting or useful simply whack that like button at the bottom there it really helps out this video and the channel quite a bit so at this point i've sent a request saying i need help and then she sends a request back to me and it went back and forth. And interestingly, each time I responded, the pre-canned options were slightly different. I think probably based on her questions. Because uh, again, this is all technology they've used in their in-reach devices for years. And so they've had time to kind of hone what the right response is for certain questions or a list of responses. In this case, for those individual messages, the response time was only about 10 seconds. It was pretty darn quick between my message getting there and her seeing on her screen. Now you're gonna simply go back and forth in this chat until they've got emergency responders at your location. It is simple as that. And that could be, you know, 20 minutes minutes or it could be an hour or five hours depending on where you are in the world. The entire time they're tracking you, in fact a live track's been established, so even if you are put in an ambulance or a helicopter and flown away, they're still going to be tracking you till, until you end that session or until they've got confirmation from those emergency responders that that emergency is now complete. For you to end that session, you have to go through this multi-step process on the watch so that it's not something you like accidentally end the session, though you could certainly just 
begin that session again if you wanted to, and they would probably figure out who you are behind the scenes. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there are three ways that you can trigger this. The first one is via the controls menu for the emergency response option uh, right there. The second option is to go ahead and long hold the upper left-hand button and just keep on holding that. Uh, and that's essentially like a stalker type of scenario where you believe you're being tracked. And in that case, it will not make any beeping on the wrist itself. It'll do that completely silently. That way you can go ahead and emergency response notified after that particular 10 seconds. The third way is if you crash. Uh, if you crash your bike or man, like run into a tree, a fall in a ravine, something like that, that's a high G-force impact event that will trigger this as well. In that case, you have 10 seconds to cancel that. Uh, and this is something that is definitely gonna be interesting to see how this works longer term. And that's something that's been on Garmin devices for many, many years, but you'll often see false positives, especially on the bike computer side, less so on the wearables, but I usually get like one or so false positive a year. Uh, and if I'm riding along down like downhill mountain biking or in traffic, I don't usually have 10 seconds to even hear that in some cases or see that on my wrist, let alone go ahead and respond to it. In my mind, that's Garmin's problem to figure out because if they've got too many false positives, they'll have to decide whether or not the automatic crash detection automatically notifies emergency services versus the past, it automatically notified your friends and family. So that's the third way. The fourth way, I know that I didn't say there was four ways, but it actually is a secret fourth way. The fourth way is you leave it in your gym bag and then the button gets pressed. And what's interesting about that scenario is that it's different. Uh, so if you were to leave it in your gym bag, for example, and that upper left-hand button gets pressed just like it would in a stalker scenario, in that case, because it's not on your wrist, Garmin actually gives you 30 seconds to go ahead and cancel it. Uh, and there's an alarm going off the entire time. It's vibrating, it's pretty loud. Uh, if your bag is near you uh, and you've done the accidental pressing via your bag, you're absolutely gonna hear this thing. So you've got 30 seconds to dig it out before it begins this whole chain reaction of contacting the emergency response center. Okay, so now just a couple like totally random things that I thought were sort of interesting in this. Uh, one, a lot of people ask whether or not you can use this to just contact your contacts, and you can. Uh, so you don't have to contact the emergency response center via LTE. When you go to the controls menu there, uh, you see assistance plus, and you choose below that my contacts. And then below that is each one of your predefined contacts. So if I choose one of my contacts there, like my wife, it'll send the message to her. It'll send my location. It'll start a live track with where I am. Uh, all that's done right there. And I can choose what the particular emergency is. Even if it's just, I'm okay, but uh, I need help or whatever the case is, that's all sort of there. You can also go ahead within that menu and do a custom text message uh, using a little rotary keyboard too, just like before. In that case, your emergency contact, your friend, family, spouse, whatever, uh, can go ahead and respond back. Now what's interesting is they can respond back unlimited number of times. So they can send you unlimited messages to you, but you can only send them one message per emergency response trigger. It's a little bit kind of weird right now. Uh, unlike the you know emergency response center where you can go forever back and forth. In this case, once you send your one message, that's like your one go. Of course, you could just trigger the whole thing again and start again and do that, but that's kind of clumsy. Uh, also interesting to note is that when you trigger this emergency response to your friends and family, it ends your workout. So you can't just use this to be like, hey, I'm running late in a workout. For example, yesterday I was open water swimming and it was the first open water swim of the year and I was going pretty darn slow, uh, way slower than I told my wife I would go. Uh, so in that case, I would have been nice to be able to tell her at some point along the way, yo, I'm just going slow, I'll, I'll be there. Even though she had the live track, because this was live tracking uh, out in open water, just fine via LTE, it would have been nice just to be able to tell her, I'm fine, I'm just slow boating today. Uh, you can't do that today at least without canceling your entire workout and nobody really wants that. So hopefully Garmin can like just move this a tiny bit forward to have those pre can messages and the little keyboard for your predefined contacts to be able to send them a message mid-workout that just simply says I'm, I'm running late. Now the other super geeky note here is that if you disabled Bluetooth on your watch, so not on your phone, but on your watch uh, and you're just on LTE and you trigger the emergency response to the emergency response center, it'll actually forcibly turn back on Bluetooth on your watch and utilize your phone as well. So it utilizes both both paths. It basically says, I'm going to take whichever path I can get. Uh, so in my case earlier, I was out in the woods with that, with only one bar of signal. Uh, and so it's going to take whatever signal it can get on whatever devices can get. So kind of a, a neat little touch there. Okay, so with that, there you go, a complete look at the emergency response notification system thingamajig on Garmin devices. Again, this is something that right now it's only on one watch, but of course it's going to be probably on almost every watch of theirs in not too short order. That's just the way Garmin works. They don't do things for one device. Uh, and certainly we're going to to see this on higher end devices and eventually probably on lower end devices as well. That's again how Garmin works. With that, if you found this interesting or useful, simply whack that like button at the bottom there or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. With that, have a good one.